the trajectory can go a complete opposite direction if you were like, no, the reptiles are creepy. We don't want to have those in the house. Yeah, I, well, for sure. Um, but, I, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's, I just think it's our responsibility as a parent to just like when the kids got some sort of a fire, I don't care what it is, like throw gas on it, man. Don't try to put it out. I convinced my neighbor, he's all about like investments and long-term money making. And I convinced him to invest $1,200 in a, a specific trio of specific animals. We made a contract that he gets 100% of the babies until he gets his money back. And then he gets 20% of the babies from them even after he's paid off that is very interesting so, okay so i have to break this down a little bit <laughs> yeah, so I, did, I told you i was like when you did what when you yeah, first yeah. told me i was like what what contract yeah. so maddox from your perspective what do you see are the benefits of getting to share the hobby with your dad uh well for starters he's got much deeper of a pocket than i do <laughs> <laughs> wow are you serious right now yeah. no, that was that's it that's the no, first no, thing is because i'm the well, money, I'm the money guy To the Animals at Home podcast. This is episode number 115. My name is Dylan Perrin, and thank you so much for tuning in today. Now, today I have a very fun episode for everyone. As you know, the mission of this podcast is really to help promote herpetoculture, especially the positive sides of herpetoculture, and you know, also highlight the negative sides too and figure out how we can improve those. But one of the areas that we haven't really spent too much time dissecting on the show is the positive herpetoculture that is family and friendship bonding. You know, those relationships that you build around the hobby, whether that's with your kids, your fa other family members, your spouse, or your friends. And that is an incredible piece of herpetoculture that I think really needs to be highlighted. So today joining me on the podcast is Jeff and Maddox Stewart. They are a father and son team that run the channel Exotic Idiotics. So in the episode, of course, we discuss how they got into herpetoculture. Was it one of them that got interested first and dragged the other one in or vice versa? Or how did that work? Of course, we discuss their collection of animals that they have and their YouTube channel. But really the heart of this discussion is discussing the relationship that these two have that is really centered around herpetoculture. Maddox is only 13 years old, although he is incredibly well-spoken and very funny. So you'll find yourself laughing throughout this episode. But I, I talked to him about what it's like to have your dad so engaged with the hobby with you. What is it like to be able to work on that together? And, and we, of course, discuss it with Jeff as well. What is it like to be the father in that relationship and, and be able to use to be able to use herpetoculture as a bonding experience with your son? And I think there are many people who engage in herpetoculture who are sort of like myself. I just kind of do it on my own. And I think many of us would, would love that experience to be able to work on it together with someone else in person. I think many of us have sort of virtual friends and Facebook and other you know people that you meet on social media and whatnot, but there's that, that, that I don't think you can re re replace or replicate being able to work on an enclosure together with another person. And, and so Jeff walks us through that and Maddox kind of talks about how beneficial it is for him as well. And I know there are many people listening to this podcast that would love to have, you know, a family member engaging with the hobby with them or, or how, how can they, you know, look for an experience that they can actually get their kid involved. And so we talk about that. We talk about how beneficial it is and, and how to get other people involved in the hobby and, and the bond and, relationship that that can create. Before we jump into the episode, as always, make sure you head to animalsathomenetwork.com if you're looking for show notes or any other information on this episode or any of the other episodes that have been recorded on this network. If you would like to join us on Patreon, head to patreon.com slash animalsathome. There you have early access to episodes and the opportunity to ask questions to upcoming guests. Thank you so much to CustomReptileHabitats.com for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. You can find links in both the YouTube description as well as the show notes. Now, before we jump into the episode officially, this is, I'm recording this right now, it's this December 15th, the 19th is when you're listening to this. I think this will be my last episode for the year. I have no idea how 2021 went through so quickly. It's incredible, but I'll probably not post an episode on Boxing Day, which is December 26th, Boxing Day for... Canadians and the, the other Europeans out there. 
I don't think I'll post an episode on that one, and I'll probably not post one on January 2nd either. I haven't quite decided how much of a break I want to take. Of course, just like last year, I took a break through the holidays. I want to do that again. So if you if you are curious when the next episode is coming out, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Animals at Home CA. The latest will be January 9th. The earliest will probably be January 2nd, or maybe I'll do a bonus episode somewhere in there. But likely, I, I'll take at least one Sunday off to enjoy the holidays. I've already recorded a bunch of episodes that will be coming out in the new year. They're amazing. I can't wait to share them with you but I do want to take the time you know to spend time with my family and whatnot before you know 2022 enjoy the episode Jeff and Maddox welcome to the podcast thank you for doing this no thank, thank you. you for inviting us yes yeah, is awesome yeah I'm stoked to have you guys on I think this conversation will be very relatable for people and also people will be wanting to engage in this as well because I think there's many people that want to ha- have a, a bond like you guys have over herpetoculture and so we're, we're gonna get into all that but I kind of want to know how this started did was one of you interested in reptiles first and got the other one into it or how, how did it work? Um, so from what I have heard, he got a chameleon on vacation in Hawaii when he was younger than me, even, and it kind of set him off and he's always kind of had reptiles since then. So it was, he's always been into them. And then he kind of laid that down onto me, which he did a yeah. too good of a job of. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was in, uh, I was in Maui. And we went there for Christmas and I was going to school in California and we had like four weeks off for Christmas break. And uh, we were in Maui and I was, I think I said I was 11 and my parents had told me that they were going to set me up with a pet for my 12th birthday. And there was like a street vendor that had Jackson's chameleons and Tamarins of all things, um, just like in these cages. And I was like, mom, I want this chameleon. And so she got it for me. She talked to the guy about it for a little bit and it lived in a cardboard box with shredded newspaper in the hotel for like three days. Um, <laughs> it was, I look back at it now and I, people talk about how sensitive chameleons are. And I'm like, man, this one went through it. But, um, and then we brought it back on the plane and uh, yeah, we set it up in like a chicken wire cage and, you know, had like a two liter bottle with holes po- poked in it to make a dripper and had it by the front window of the house and uh, the neighbors would come over and they wanted to like watch it eat and stuff. Cause nobody had ever really seen them before. Like never, I mean, this was 25 years ago. My sister's obsessed with watching our veiled eat. She loves it. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. But that's what started it for me. And then it eventually died of old age. And then uh, my parents were pretty cool about letting me have animals. Um, I think the next thing I got was a pair of Bribon geckos or Bibron geckos. Um, and then I just had, had kind of always had things. They would never let me have snakes. So that was the first thing that I got when, um, I was out on my own and it's ironic cause we actually don't have any snakes now. Mm. It's the only thing we don't have, but have to um, fix that. yeah, no, we almost did today. Actually, we were, <laughs> we were really, really close to, uh, purchasing a dragon snake today from a guy who really, uh, wow. Yeah, I mean, when I when he was talking to me about it, I was like, "These are supposed to be just impossible." Like, but he's how had it, he's had it alive for almost a year. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he was gonna give us like he's like, "I know it's doing well in the setup, and I know that you guys know what you're doing, so I'll give you the whole setup and just take it home the way it is." Um, but I just I don't know I don't know enough about him. I just didn't quite feel comfortable. So yeah, we we'll definitely do our research and get back to him though. Yeah, 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 that is a cool species. I, I I know one person that has, I think, a pair or, or maybe just one, and they've been doing well with it as well. But yeah, that it's definitely a specialized animal. And then, yeah. so when Maddox was born, were reptiles in the house already, or did was that did that kind of re-enter at some point later? Um, I don't think I had him really when he was born. Um, by the time he was three or four, we had some. I think that he, when he was really little, he probably doesn't even remember this. Um, but he had a leopard gecko at one point in his room. And I mean, I was taking care of it because he was still only like three or four years old. Um, you had, I don't remember that. Like, yeah. <laughs> not even briefly. Yeah. Um, there, you had an albino red tail in there, like a hat, like a little that. baby albino that. red tail in there for a while. Um, but yeah, I mean, as long as he can remember, there's probably always been reptiles in the house, but there was definitely a break when I got married and we were starting to have kids where I, I didn't really have any of that. Right. So Maddox, what, what's the first memory for you having reptiles at home? Ooh. Uh, when You've I been was around like, for so long, it's hard to remember. <laughs> when I was like five-ish, he had an anaconda. That's like 
as far back as I can remember, it was an anaconda and then a pair of rough. No. Yeah, black roughneck black monitors. Black roughneck monitors. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I find it so interesting because. It, I always it's it's fascinating to find someone who grew up in a household of reptiles and for you know this is like the first or maybe second generation where that's possible you know you go back two or three generations mm-hmm. and the people keeping reptiles you know 40 years ago they were they were rare and it was right. a very like small subset so we may have people who are around your age Jeff who who did somehow grow up with reptiles in the house that would have been extremely rare and it's like really Maddox's generation that would be the first one where Reptiles are a lot more mainstream now, so it's just I can't. I would find it so amazing to think if I got to grow up with reptiles in the house right from the beginning, uh, that would be dangerous. I think. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, probably. I mean, I mean, if if you've seen any of like our Instagram or anything, it is it is dangerous for him. Uh, <laughs> I mean, for I sure. I know what I'm doing. I don't mean I dangerous mean, like that. I mean, oh. I mean, it's dangerous in the sense that you know, there's kind of been this precedent established that you know, because of the knowledge and because there's more than one of us taking care of the animals, it's like, he sees something and he's like, I really want one of those. So then he starts doing the research. He starts saving up his money. And as long as he is able to, to pay for it and able to care for it, and he can tell me exactly what needs to be done. I I'll let him have it at this point. I mean, Mm -hmm. and um, it hasn't gotten to a point yet you know, kind of part of the agreement was like, if it ever gets to a point where I'm like, we got to go downstairs and feed everything. And you're just like, Oh, I don't want to, but then that's when I'm going to be like, okay, well then, you know, we got to start talking about this, but we always enjoy it. So that'll never happen. (laughs) That's great. That's well, it's actually, I grew up as outside of the animal world as an athlete. And that was one of the rules that my parents had for me as well. It was like, we will take you to practice every single day. We'll go twice a day. But the moment you start complaining about it is the moment we're going to go, okay, we got to make a different decision here. And, that, right. and that's, I had the same sort of uh, mentality as you, Maddox. It's like, I'll never complain about it because I love swimming. I love competing. And, and that's how it will be. And yeah, you don't want it to come turn into a, a job that you're not enjoying. Mm-hmm. So, so Maddox, why don't you run through a few of the you know broad strokes of what you guys are keeping right now? Uh, <laughs> it's a hard question. <laughs> it's a hard question. We've got a 75 gallon mixed reef saltwater tank that we haven't really featured on the channel that much yet. No, it's hard mm-hmm. to film because the light, the blue lights, the blue lights and mess it up with the camera and you all just the, see yourself in the reflection of the glass. Yeah, and the pumps make, the pumps a, really make a lot of noise, and yeah. Um, we've got. I'm just gonna kind of look around the room. We've got bearded dragon, sulcata tortoise baby, Euromastix. Peter's banded skink, chameleon, Grishophilus persinas, which are green killed lizards, uh, a few crested geckos, and the water monitor, and then all our invertebrates. And a I'm lychee. Even, you just got a lychee. Oh, and the lychee gecko. And I'm not even going to attempt to count all our invertebrates. Yeah. it's. I mean, we have uh, probably about Roughly 45 40 to 50 tarantulas, tarantulas. Um, oh, some, wow. some scorpions. Yeah. Um, uh, and then some kind of oddball ones, like we have a tailless whip and we have a, um, centipede. scolopendra, some spinipedes, Vietnamese mm-hmm. centipede, a colony of assassin bugs, uh, the white spotted assassin bugs, the, the totus, I think they are. Um, and then we breed dubia roaches, Madagascar hissing roaches. Um, and then we have colonies of isopods and springtails going at all times as well. Basically but anything it, it with is- snakes. Yeah, and yeah, so that'll be next on the list. You'll have to yep. get some snakes. But it's probably kind of nice to have two people tackling the collection at once. You guys can split oh, yeah. the chores up. And, mm-hmm. and So how do you guys divvy up the work? Uh, I do the majority of the stuff with, in the morning and with the reptiles, and then he does the majority of the stuff at night and with the invertebrates. Because mm-hmm. I'm home alone in the morning for probably about an hour before school because he has to go to work, and my mom has to go to work. She teaches high school. My sister is in elementary school, so her school starts at, what, 7? Yeah, it's early. Yeah. yeah, and then I'm in middle school, so I don't have to be anywhere until 8.30. And my little sister is pretty crabby in the morning, so I'm usually up at 6.45. <laughs> That's because I have to wake her up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, he... Um, and then I feed all the animals, make sure the lights are on, make sure everybody's misted, make sure they've got water. Then he'll do, he'll like feed the geckos and turn off the lights, make sure everybody's got water again, because our tortoise drinks like a horse. <laughs> yeah well and i mean at night when we're both home it's you know we we don't really 
it's kind of divvied up like that. You know, if he is doing something, you know, I know that at nighttime, like I'm going to come down and check on everything. Mm -hmm. Um, And then when I come down in the morning to put the dogs up before we leave, I kind of go around with like a red, like a red light bulb and check on all the spiders and just kind of, cause that's when I get to see them out, you know, when everything's (laughs) dark and, Um, so I kind of do a brief check on everything, but he, he does all of the, the feeding like greens and, Mm -hmm. you know, all that kind of stuff in the morning. And then at night you're usually down here with me. I'm usually down here with you, but yeah, I don't really like all we really do down here is we, we see geckos every other day. So on days we don't feed them, we just kind of miss down, missed everything and shut the lights lights off off for the most part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there is this, and maybe I can get both of your opinions on this, this sense of responsibility that comes with caring for animals. And and as an adult, it's a little bit different because you just, it's sort of implied. I mean, there are ter- so many adults that are terrible at keeping animals, as you know, especially in right. this hobby. But, you know, people that are engaged in keeping, it's part, it's part of the implication when you buy an animal and you go through it. But as a younger person, sometimes that implication is not clear because you want to care, you want this really cool animal and you see it on TV, you see it on, on, the, on YouTube or on the internet and you just want in your room but then sometimes you forget that there's a responsibility to care for it and it sounds like Maddox you have a really good you know grasp on on the importance of caring for it so Mm -hmm. just talk about the importance of that that responsibility that caring for animals brings to the household you can go first on this (laughs) (laughs) um it's really not as much work as I feel like a lot of people would think like it is a responsibility and of course if you buy an animal you don't take care of it it's going to die but as long as the animals you buy aren't like incredibly high maintenance, which the majority of reptiles aren't in my opinion, incredibly high maintenance. It's a lot easier to maintain a larger collection than a lot of people would think. In my opinion, it's, it's, I think the most important thing is, you know, when you get down to the responsibility of it is um, yes, you know, you're bringing another life into your home, whether it's a spider or a centipede or, a, a water tile, monitor, you yeah. know, something that's got a lot more, I guess, substance to it. You know, if somebody mm-hmm. sees a water monitor, they're probably going to in, you know, internally care for it more than like a tarantula, mm-hmm. you know, the average person. Um, but it, the, the routine, I think is like a, after we got into a routine, uh, you know, you don't really like think about it as, you know, Oh, we're just caring for the animals. And we just think about it as just kind of like, this is just what we do. You know, Mm -hmm. this is what we like to do. This is like our hobby. This is what we enjoy doing. Um, And so, you know, it's, it's an interesting question because I don't know that I've ever thought about it as like, I have to do this because it's important. I think it's always just kind of been like, this this is the responsibility we took upon ourselves Mm -hmm. when we purchased the animal. So like, this is just what we do. I mean, Um, I see it as more of a chore to take care of like our dogs and the reptiles because I just, I really just strongly just like the smell of dog food. <laughs> <laughs> so reptiles are your animal then. Reptiles yeah. Reptiles are my animal. Yeah, for sure. So, so what will, how will this collection of animals progress? Cause I think Maddox, are you 13? I am 13. Yeah. Thir- 13. So eventually <clears throat> like five, six, seven years down the road, eventually you are going to move out of, of your parents' home. What will happen to that collection? Have you guys thought that far down the road? Cause you know, an um, animal like a water monitor will live a long time and, hmm. and where does Some that progress? The, the female spiders can live for like 40, 50 years. Um, right. For some, now, yeah, some for now we've agreed that when I'm in college, he's going to allow me to take a few animals of my choice and then he'll make sure everything at home stays alive. And unfortunately, like I can't bring my water monitor in a college dorm room because a water monitor enclosure is realistically the size, the size of a college, of a college dorm, dorm room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like I could probably get away with like my chameleon and a couple spiders, but that's really about it. And he said that he'll take care of them. How true was that? Asking the wrong person. <laughs> you made you call me out. Yeah. Um, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, no, I think that that's kind of why, like, it's kind of gotten to a point now where, you know, when we're talking about anything new, um, I, I've kind of hit that wall to a point where I'm like, okay, I don't want anything else that requires like heat, like heat and UVB mm-hmm. and, you know, like more elaborate setups. It's like, if you mm-hmm. want to get another species of tarantula or something like, like a, a crested gecko. gecko that doesn't, you mm-hmm. know, require a ton of like, you know, they're, I mean, they're in nice setups. Like they look nice, but they don't need, you know, external UVB, heat and stuff like yeah. that. Um, that I'm okay with that because that's easier to care for, you know, in my opinion, that's going to just kind of fit right in with the routine Mm -hmm. of what I'm already doing. Um, so that's kind of where I stand on it. Uh, 
I don't see what we have right now. Now that we've kind of got it down to, we have these certain steps we go through on a day-to-day basis. Uh, maintaining it by myself would be difficult, but it wouldn't be completely impossible. <laughs> um, I like to say I wouldn't be able to do this if I didn't have him to help me. But I think the reality is I probably wouldn't choose to to do it the way that I'm doing it if it wasn't something we were doing together. Um, mm-hmm. But because it is something that we're doing together, then whatever needs to happen when he goes to college, I mean, it's it is it's going to happen. Yeah. So, and if you want to point fingers, you could totally blame me for our animal explosion because <laughs> I bought a Euro Massix and I, I wanted a Yuri for a while and I found one. I got a good price. I rescued it because it was like left on the doorstep in the cold. So, I essentially what the Euro Mastix? Yeah, they didn't tell you about that. Oh, no, um, it was a rescue. <laughs> so, I rescued one. And then I saw a tarantula at PetSmart and I was like, well, I've got this spare 20 Mm. and I'm not going to lie. I genuinely impulse purchase a curly hair tarantula. And after having it for like a week or two and feeding it, we were like, Hey, these things are freaking awesome. And we looked into it and we were like, Oh my God, you can get blue ones and red ones and gold ones. And Mm -hmm. that's yeah. And, And, um, Kind well, because I wanted to do more research on it to make sure we were doing the right thing, and then that was <laughs> we found out the pet store told us all wrong um, on how Classic. to care for how to care for tarantulas. Classic. Yeah, so they told us that it needed UVB lighting. Oh yeah, and like a heat lamp, and mm-hmm. they're like, oh, it can't climb out the of the cage. It can't it climb out, out the glass. Of the it glass got out twice. within like fifteen minutes of us having it in the house. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so um, it said it needed a twenty gallon. You could put an adult curly hair in like a right. Like He's in like a twelve by eight. Tw- yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it's. I'm, I'm glad that you guys have even talked about the the future of the collection and how that will all work out in the in the future. As far as Maddox is is working with animals, something that you would want to do in the future. Like, are, do you oh, think yeah. you'll go to I've, college for I've animals? I've already got it all planned out. I've, I've scoped out like the <laughs> some good colleges that I can go to for a good like veterinary program or herpetology program, and a lot of them they're not exactly like schools that you may have heard of, but. If it's what you want to do, it's what you want to do. And a D2 school is still a good school. They can still teach you everything you need to know. And I would just love to own my own pet store. That's really like what I want to do. Or like be a zookeeper, something where I can just be hands-on with animals all the time. Yeah, no, that that's awesome. And I wonder how much of that is genetic or, or, or was, you know, part of growing up with, in a household mm. of animals. Cause obviously Jeff, you had this interest in animals from when you were a kid. And, and so there's probably a genetic link there as well, but it's one of the great arguments for having animals at home, keeping captive reptiles. And you know, you have somebody who's 13 and already has an entire career mapped out that it's going to help animals in the end. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. And, and I think that there's a lot of, um, I think that we kind of, you know, we kind of mm. live in a society where a lot of parents, their kids will say, you know, Oh, I want to do, I don't know. I want to be an actor. And like how many parents will be like, it is so hard to do that. Like you need to just like do something else or, you know, they'll have, they'll come up with an idea to do something to the parents are like, well, you can't make any money doing that. So like, you have to like do something where you're going to make a lot of money or whatever. I mean, I remember the first job um, that I told my parents I wanted, we were at some sort of like zoo amusement park thing growing up. And we watched um, a show with, uh, like chimpanzees and spider monkeys and stuff like that. And I told my mom, I was like, when I grow up, I'm going to be a monkey trainer. And she just like laughed at me. You know, she's like, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Like nobody decides they just want to be a monkey trainer. And I, and I, and I sometimes think like, how would my life be different now? If my mom had been like, let's find out how you can learn more about monkeys. You know what I mean? Or whatever it is. So, you know, as, as he's getting more and more into it, uh, I agree with what you're saying is like us being allowing him to just go for it. it. It has allowed him to just really think about what he wants to do. And he's getting a good start, you know, learning about it now. Um, and, and it also gives him an opportunity to, to change his mind. You know, one day he could get up and just be like, you know, I thought I really love this, but like I've, as I've grown, I've kind of grown out of it or whatever. I don't really see that happening, but um you know, I, I think that allowing him to start at young has been a really good thing overall. And I do think it is kind of partially genetic, 
because because your bit. sister like she's not as hands on with it, but mm-hmm. she's it's like every day it's a little bit more. She wants to come help feed. She wants to come see stuff. So like she's, she's definitely still nervous about like holding stuff. Yeah, but she's interested. She's Whereas my wife is just like, whatever's Meh. in the basement is yours. I don't even come down here. As long as yeah, it's not yeah. a cat or a bird, I don't care. It's like our only <laughs> restrictions is no cats, which they knock over all our tarantula shells anyway, and no birds, but they're allowed and they bite. Yeah. <laughs> so that's fair rules, fair rules. Yeah. And if you guys I, I get guess. a third, if the if the sister gets involved, then, oh my God, you guys are going to have have to buy a shed or something for the back. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I mean, technically the sulcata tortoise was for her. But I think um, it was just a way for him to get a sulcata tortoise. I mean, whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whatever. That's not what it was. <laughs> yeah, you're right, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it, it's it's really cool, and it, that that's they're you know reptiles now that they're becoming more mainstream. It's a little bit different, but they're they were always kind of this weird thing, and they are, still are a little bit weird thing. It's, I don't go out and tell the pu- public around me that I have snakes at home because it's not the it's mm-hmm. you know it's like people are like, well, that's weird, and then you have to have this whole conversation about how snakes are weird, and so you know you have a young kid uh, who is interested in reptiles. It's it's pretty amazing to be able to be there and foster that and, and encourage it. And who knows, like maybe Maddox will be a herpetologist one day or a vet, a great vet. Like I'm sure that will be the case. And, but like you said, with the monkey story, like the trajectory can go a complete opposite direction. If you were like, no th- reptiles are creepy. We don't want to have those in the house. Yeah. I, well, for sure. Um, but I, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's, I just think it's our responsibility as a parent to just like when the kids got some sort of a fire, I don't care what it is like throw gas on it, man. Don't try to put it out, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and this was easier because it was something I was passionate about already, but you know, my daughter, uh, she's only seven and she does like competitive dancing. I didn't know anything about competitive dancing. And then after, but now that I've seen that she hasn't burned out on it, she dances like seven to 10 hours a week. And, it, and then she just dances while she's at home. So now I'm like, okay, cool. Number one dance dad all in, like, let's go. Mm-hmm. And you know, we're, we were just, my wife and I were just booking all the hotels for her competitions and all this stuff. And it's like, it, it, I'm not going to allow him to do what he loves and then tell her like, oh, well, I'm not going to be involved with that, but have fun. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Exactly. Yeah, you have to foster, yeah, just, you know, nurturing that, whatever it is that they're interested in. Like you said, it could change directions at any point, and that's just kind of part of growing up. And mm-hmm. so, Maddox, from your perspective, what do you see are the benefits of getting to share the hobby with your dad? Uh, Well, for starters, he's got much deeper of a pocket than I do. <laughs> <laughs> wow, are you serious right now? Yeah. No, that that's it? That's the no, first no, thing is because I'm, the, well, money, I'm I mean, the money guy. I mean, yeah. <laughs> wow, okay. hey, I mean, that fair. is a huge a advantage thing, it is it's fair enough um and also i feel like me doing this with my dad as opposed to just like the typical hey dad let's go throw a baseball in the backyard it is like a lot more of a bonding experience than back to throwing a ball in the backyard or like a sport because i mean back to what he said earlier when you buy a pet it doesn't matter what it is you're bringing another life into your house and it's your job to keep it alive and we spend a lot of time together doing that yeah like and the only time that one of us ever done here by ourselves is me in the morning that's it only because he can't be here Mm -hmm. yeah so i mean we're together all the time when we're doing this yeah And and, and i don't in my opinion there isn't anything else that you could be doing um as a parent and a child that is gonna involve this much hands on time Right, with Unless each other, like with keeping like animals together, or, or like maybe if you like, if you like build stuff, like Gundams, build. build Gundams. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there is something about sharing a, a a hobby that allows you to create something. So it's like you're both working on a project at the same time, and you're creating something that didn't exist prior. Mm -hmm. And then you bring something into existence together and, and there's a plan and it's like, okay, so, you know, you have a plan to get this new animal. So then you guys sit down and you figure out what enclosure needs to look like. What are the extra, you know, enrichments and all this that we need? Where are we going to get the animal? And then you build up the enclosure. I'm sure you guys walk through the, you know, natural history and whatnot, however you want to set up the enclosure. And it's just, there's that thing that now exists only exists because of the partnership that you guys get to work on together. And you can Mm -hmm. imagine how strong that is going to make a bond between the two of you. And back to like his monkey trainer story. I really do wonder like how this would be different if I was like, Hey dad, can I buy this Euromastics? And he would have just said, no. 
Yeah. Or like that's I mean that's a good no, point. No spiders. Yeah, that is that is a really good point. Well, there's um, a lot of people listening to this right now that might be in that same situation, right? Like a, a, mm-hmm. a child that wants a parent or wants, or even sometimes there's a husband and a wife where the husband wants and the wife doesn't want, or sometimes it's the wife that wants a snake and the husband doesn't want it. And, yeah. and it yeah. can be, it's a challenge. We actually have um, a neighbor and he and his daughter wanted, uh, he's really into, I think he's really into like tortoises and turtles and stuff like that. And his wife's just like, no, 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 no. Um, and he he could, on Halloween, they were trick or treating and he was like, Hey, can, can we come inside and check it out? And him and the, he and the daughter came in and by the time they left, you know, he texted me later and he goes, man, that was her favorite stop of the whole night. And now she wants a gecko and a skink and a, you know, all this, she's like, thought it was just so cool. And she, he still can't convince his wife (laughs) to do it. And I'm like, let her come over and let her see it and let her see like what it actually is and what it's about. Because like you're saying, I think a lot of people are just like, ew, snake or lizard or whatever. And they they don't really know. Five minutes with a Sokata tortoise, you'll want one. I promise. (laughs) Yeah. I mean. So cool. But it does. It happens. It happens a lot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's kind of what we're trying to. Not, you know, I don't, I'm not trying to convince people to go buy exotic animals Mm -mm. necessarily. I think I'm more as the parent convincing other parents to like allow their kids to explore that. If that's something, if they walk into a pet store and they're not drawn to the dogs and the cats and the whatever, but they're really drawn to these other animals before you say no, at least take some time to learn about it for yourself and see what actually goes into having one. Mm -hmm. Um, because it does change the trajectory of it could change all kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's so true, and it, it's it doesn't have to be just reptiles. Like you said, it could be fish, it could be anything. But being able to, I mean, it might be a little bit tougher. Like I wonder if somebody, if the say Maddox had this deep interest in reptiles and you didn't, would it would it be possible for you to take on that hobby as well and actually somehow get engaged with it? I don't know. Like I don't know if you can force it with with somebody, or maybe just by the act of starting to do it, you may become more interested in it. I don't know. Uh, the hard questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just thinking. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think it's, I think it would be possible. Uh, I think outside of like a true phobia, you know, if you actually yes. have like a legit arachnophobia, like arachnophobia or something like that, then you're probably not going to change that person's mind. My mother-in-law is deathly afraid of snakes. Unfortunately, which yeah. is kind of what stopped us from already having snakes. Yeah, because she she gets my daughter off the bus every day and she comes down Takes to the basement the and lets the dogs out. And she's like, if you guys get a snake and she's like, and I will find out because I watch your YouTube and I watch your Instagram and whatever. <laughs> yeah. And um, she's like, then you're going to have to find somebody else to come do it because I will not walk down there. So if somebody is like that, you're probably not going to be able to convince them. Um, not easily anyway, you might be able to get them over their fear at one point, but getting them to be able to have it in their home is like a completely different thing. Mm -hmm. And I mean, she was like really scared of tarantulas too, but then she came down and for solid hours, she just like really paid attention and learned a lot about them. And she was like, wow, these are actually really interesting. And she doesn't mind them as much as she did, which is Little baby steps. Now we got to work towards the snake. <laughs> now we got to work on snakes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had lots of people tell me too, I'm not ever going to come to your house if you ever get a snake. And then, you know, a year later, they're holding the same snake. It's just, it's just mm-hmm. that exposure so slowly over time. And uh, are there any downsides, do you guys think? But, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to throw each other under the bus here. But are there any downsides between sharing the hobby? Because I'm some, I'm very much a solo hobbyist. Like, I'm, my wife is kind of the same as your wife and your mom. It's just, she doesn't it she doesn't hate it or anything but she's not involved in it at all yeah so are there any downsides to sharing it um i mean he has pretty shallow pockets if we're gonna <laughs> if we're gonna go back to that <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah there's not it's not a 50 50 monetary no, scheme here. no it's, i mean i've bought quite a bit of things he contributes a lot i mean for a 13 year old he brings in actually quite a bit of money he, he's always got a side hustle going yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, he, he pet sits and babysits and does whatever he can. And all his money does go into this for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I think that the downsides are just, um, in my opinion, it's, you know, because at the end of the day, you're still father and son and you're still gonna, it's gonna get to a point where I have to go into dad mode and be like, like I said, no, I'm not talking about it anymore. And you know, that's hard for me as a parent because I have my reasons that he may not understand or whatever. And, but it's also hard because 
you know, in addition to him being my son, I know parents aren't really supposed to say this, but he's also probably my best friend as far as like, he's who I spend the most time with and who I have the most things in common with and all of that. I'll take it. (laughs) And, um, you know, when we start having disagreements and we get upset with each other about little things like that, like that's never that's just, fun. I don't, no. I, I, you know, I hate, Mm-mm. I but hate that's when just things get like that. Part of being a father with his son. Well, and it's opinion. part of being in any sort of a partnership with anything, oh, I yeah. think, whether it's yeah. a business or whatever, you're going to have disagreements, but it doesn't matter if it's father and son, coworkers, boss, yeah. and, work, boss and employee, but, anything. but I don't think that any of those sort of downsides are intensified by the fact that it's father and son. I think that if it really was just a friend of mine, we'd have the same sort of disagreements about how we were going to handle the collection. Yeah. Well, I always find it so important to highlight the benefits of herpetoculture. We have these big animal rights groups that always just, you know, trying to show the most negative side to it and all all this and trying to stop reptile keeping in its tracks. And there are certain benefits that there are to keeping. I've sort of already alluded to it, but that is like, being able to bond and create this this a friendship like you said over this hobby is just so important and that will be valuable for the, your entire lives it's not just going to be valued right, in the right, reptile right. room it's mm-hmm. for everything yeah yeah definitely um i mean and it does it it goes way past all of it like you said i mean we do everything together like literally uh we go to concerts um Movie and theaters. movies and you know we he, i mean who doesn't even like go to a pet store without asking if I want to go. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, I don't really go. I mean, I'll be like leaving to go to the drive thru. I'll be like, Hey Matt, I just want to go for a ride. Yeah. You yeah. Know, just, just cause we just, we just hang out all the time. Yeah. Okay. And, but that, you know, that, uh, that kind of a bond started here. You know yeah. what I mean? Sure. Like it, it's, started it's just, reptiles. yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's like you pave the way for that and then it just can be translated into any other scenario, which is really mm-hmm. cool. Do you guys go to any expos? I'm sure if you, you do, I'm sure you go uh, together. Yeah. But yeah, we actually went to one. We went to two. We went to two not last weekend, but the weekend before that. Oh, two really? Two Saturdays yeah. ago. Yeah, they yeah, yeah they were like tw- they were like 20 minutes away from each other, and mm-hmm. we were only gonna go to one, and then um, the the owners of uh, Black Box Cages were like, "Hey, there's also this other one. You guys should come. You know, to just come see out. us they at that just one." Stand at their stand for a few hours. Yeah, so we cool. went and uh, they had never, like, they met me because I got a cage from them and I went and picked it up, but they'd never met yeah, Maddox. So their, they warehouse to is, their warehouse is close to his work office, but his work office is like an hour away from our house and they want him to go on a school day for me. So there's just really no possible way to do that, honestly. Yeah, he couldn't He couldn't I come with me. So, so they wanted to kind of meet him or whatever. And um, mm-hmm. so we went to that one and checked it out and then We found left out that there. one of the owners was on Stranger Things, which is pretty cool. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh really? Wow. Yeah. Um, no, they're super cool people. They are really cool. Um, but then yeah, then we went to that one was called Show Me Snakes. Like Nerd was there. Um mm-hmm. and then we went to Epic after that, which was actually put on by Repticon. Oh, cool. Um, but yeah, pretty much any time Repticon's the only one that comes here like all the time. Yeah, Repticon's here probably every every other three month. Or four months. Yeah, I mean oh, three at least every three, other month. Th- I mean it's coming back in yes. January. Seriously? Yeah. Got to go. I have money at that point. <laughs> <laughs> After Christmas, you got that cash. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's amazing hearing that. I I where I live there was one expo per year very small in a gymnasium and now with covid there hasn't been one for two years so i'm very Jeez. jealous of the opportunity uh, to go well to- these these kind of just started um yeah. well, the smallest one that i've ever been to was still in like it was show me snakes it was in a high school cafeteria yeah show me snakes was a little bit smaller was, than some of the ones yeah, we go to I mean, but that's still pretty big compared to like a gym yeah like yeah 10 tables <laughs> yeah right i mean but he uh, the first expo you ever went to the repticon right it was a repticon you, was, he was 18 months old and, and he, leg, he had right? a broken leg mm-hmm. so i was wheeling him around in a stroller <laughs> and then i'd like pick him up and let him like see everything and then put him back in the stroller um because cool. he had a cast basically from ankle to butt crack on his he left leg ever. so yes. big that sounds like a big break <laughs> uh that was my fault Kind um, of. It, no, it, it was, wasn't my it fault. It was my fault, but it was <laughs> your fault. I don't know. So I was at a birthday party. It was like a class birthday party. It wasn't a birthday party. We were just there, just the two of us, just hanging oh, out. I had a day off. Yeah. Oh, so. And Dude, you were 18 months old. You don't remember. I thought it was a birthday party. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> and from what I remember from the story, or from what I've been told. <laughs> That's more story, like it. 
uh, there was this really big blow up slide and I wanted to go on it and he didn't want me to go by myself. So he came with me and I sat in his lap and his leg like rolled over mine. And like, you can see he's a pretty big guy. And I was like that big. Dang. Is that a fat joke? <laughs> no, it was. Okay. Not that big. It was, you are six foot two. And yeah. His, baby. Basically his leg kind of ended up like under my back and it would like spiral fraction. Oh. And it was not yeah. a fat joke. It was a, you are six foot two and I was 18 months old. Okay, fair. <laughs> and your leg snapped like a toothpick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had to talk to like Child Protective Services and all this stuff because of the serious? type of break it would be like if someone grabbed a, an arm or a leg and like twisted it. Like that, yeah, was, yeah. that was the shape of the it fracture. Was my fault. Um, well, I don't know. But you got old. to go to the expo and get held up for all the tables. So yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. have to do any of that manual walking around like. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And no, then, I, no, you I would, remember walk. the South Carolina one? That one was probably oh, that your favorite. That was so fun. Because like Georgia has pretty strict laws. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't have anything fun, more or but, less. That's not true, but but they're strict. Um, <laughs> they're strict. But we went to an expo in South Carolina, and they had like a whole section that was nothing. It was but, nothing but venomous in the yeah, back. Vipers and cobras and mm-hmm. all that oh, stuff. So cool. it was the first time we'd really seen like anything like had, that like king cobras and mambas and all kinds of crazy yeah stuff. it was it was crazy yeah that is kind of crazy for an expo yeah, yeah it was yeah. just like a reptile cool to too. see yeah it was really cool to see mm-hmm. but uh, you know what was kind of scary about it though is i probably could have bought any of that yeah that and just br- and just driven it back home and like nobody would have known I mean, we've got a friend who like has for some reason always wanted a dwarf cayman we don't understand why <laughs> but that's the place to go yeah yeah um, I think somebody that was with our group actually bought a prairie dog, which are illegal in Georgia, oh, but and, you and just a, drove it back in his and, car. But, but what I don't understand about him doing that, you can get a license for a prairie dog like relatively easily. Yeah, like, it's something that's know. not that hard to like, have a license for here. A prairie dog, like you're talking about a rodent? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And mm. I also find rodents disgusting. It would never I didn't know people them. kept that as a pet. They actually bond with the owners like really well from what, mm, from what I I've mean, heard. Wow. Yeah, they're similar to like, like Daegu's. Da- yep. Yeah. Um, okay, interesting. Yeah, but uh, they any basically anything. It's Yeah, it's like Florida. Like anything that they think if it gets released could survive in the wild you know or anything that is already indigenous to the state, you're not allowed to keep. Yeah. And then, you know, the obvious ones like whales and dolphins and rhinoceroses and stuff like that. You all the fun it. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all, yeah. All those, the big cats and the whales. Yeah. 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 I mean, I don't know if you could have a whale. It'd be hard. <laughs> dude, need I, a big pool. Yeah. <laughs> a big pool. I mean, if sea, sea, sea world's catching heat for it, then like, there's no way you're having yeah. one at your house. <laughs> there's no backyard whale situation. <laughs> no, definitely <laughs> I mean, not. A dolphin. Oh my pool. gosh, stop. You have a big enough pool for a dolphin. Stop. It's like a dwarf dolphin. But a dwarf dolphin? I don't know, by a baby. A dwarf <laughs> dolphin. <laughs> Ridiculous. Well, tell me a little bit about the water monitor because that is an animal that will get big. So how, why did you guys get one? Did you, was there a moment where you're like, we got to get one of these or, or, or how did that conversation start? And, and then um, what's the, the plan co- with him? So he used to have tegus when I was little and he bred them and I was like, oh, my God, big lizards. Yes. And I wanted one. And I was actually going to look for an Argentine black and white tegu. And he pointed out, hey, look at these little water monitors. And they were so incredibly social. They were they were captive hatched, so they were imported. But even like nerd says, if you can find a wild caught baby that's like super social, then there's really no difference between that and captive red one. And it saved me solid six, seven hundred bucks. So I'll take that. I mean, we, we, you still paid quite a bit for it because it was already, well, it was already well socialized, but, but um, I, I've been looking for a bigger lizard for a long time, like maybe almost a year and a half. I've been wanting a big lizard. Yeah. Yeah. And then I finally decided to save up the money and, but uh, Loki. Yeah. Will you guys be able to keep him outside in the summertime? Once, um, yeah, for sure. Once yeah. It gets yeah. it gets yeah. really hot here in the summer. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's the weather here is in the summer is very similar to how it feels in Florida. I mean, um, geez, that, maybe not a Florida summer, but probably like a Florida September, <laughs> I guess. I and mean, I know the people down there you keep them outside like year round, mm-hmm. um, but you never know what the weather is going on now. It could end up snowing in July. 
Right. Yeah. It's pretty, Georgia's it's pretty crazy. Got really awkward weather. But if, if the, if he's not able to be kept outside 24 seven during the summer, he would definitely be able to go outside for a, we'll go outside extended for a periods bit. of time yeah. during the day. Like our tortoise. He's, we take, I'll take the tortoise out for as long he as he eats grass <laughs> and then yeah. he'll just take a nap in the sun. And then I'll take him back inside when he finally decides to wake up. Yeah, because a water monitor is quite a that's a quite a commitment for sure. That's not oh, yeah. a small animal, and and I mean, yeah. So was it what, like for Jeff when when he came when Maddox or no? I guess it was you that it was you that pointed wanted, out the water well, monitors. It was sort of uh, you know it was kind of one of those things where we were you know we were at this shop and it's actually the same shop that had the dragon snake. So like mm-hmm. this guy, you know, he gets in really high quality animals, well, he and he's like, one of those shops that you walk in and you talk to him and you're like, this dude just really loves his animals yeah. and really loves what he does because mm, he's and, got like black throat monitors and quince monitors yeah he actually just stuff. told us today he just got a, uh the license and he's going to be the first person in the u.s other than other a than zoo zoos. to get borneo the earless borneo monitors he's got a pair oh, wow. a pair coming um that's cool so we were there and you know he looked at the tegu and he played with the monitor i mean we knew that we will that we Mm-hmm. Where we were set up at the house, we'd already gotten everything to set yeah. up for my a larger reasoning, lizard. My reasoning behind a tegu was I want an animal, specifically a reptile, that's going to just be like this big, chill lizard that's super handleable. And then he told me that tegus hibernate like eight months the, of the year. Not eight months, well, not but eight months, that like, they brumate. They yeah. brumate through the winter. And that they go through this phase for like three years where they're just super mean. Not three years. It's like the, you told me the, three the years. puberty, the puberty phase. You told me three yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. Um, ba- basically, I wanted him to look at other options. I didn't want him to go in there and actually and be like so focused on a tegu because he didn't really have a ton of experience with tegus any more than anything else other than he knew that I'd had them at one point. Right, but um, he also had water monitors and you bred those at one point, so didn't you? I No, I never bred them. I, I had a couple adults that were given to me. Um but they were mean when I got them. And uh, as soon as I found somebody who actually did breed them and had more experience handling adult water monitors, I I got rid of them because I was quite honestly terrified that we were going to open up the cage and they were going to lunge at my children. Um, They were, they were pretty vicious. So, but I do love the species. And I've always, with a well-socialized baby. Yeah. I've always wanted one. So, um, when we found a baby that was that well socialized, then I said, okay, let's, let's go ahead and look at this more seriously. And this room that we're in now is only one of four rooms down here. So the, our collection is all in here because this is the only room that's finished, but we're actually going to build out the enclosure in one of the other unfinished rooms. So he's basically going to have almost an entire room to himself. Oh, cool. That's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. You, they basically will need that as they grow. So that, yeah. that makes sense. Hopefully yeah. we didn't get a Sumatran because that would suck. <laughs> It'd be really big, right? <laughs> Sumatrans, it depends on localities, but there's some that stay within like three and a half, four feet. And then there's some that get like 10. To, like, oh yeah. You're thinking of like the Javan. Javan and Javans stay a little yeah. smaller. Um, yeah. 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 But we're prepared for the biggest one that you yeah, can yeah, have yeah. as far as space. Mm-hmm. So, and, and then as far as other animals, as other other ones on the list that you guys think you'll get soon, or you kind of implied earlier that you might be starting to slow down the purchasing of new animals as the collection is getting to a certain um, size. I actually started a new breeding project, which I haven't really talked about yet. So <laughs> to, gonna, to like anybody, I'm gonna try and keep it as confidential as possible. <laughs> but I convinced my neighbor. He's oh, all, you're gonna he, go into this whole the whole thing, the whole I'm business. I'm not gonna deal? discuss. It's actually pretty doing. impressive. I, when he came <laughs> to me and told me about it, I was like, "You did what?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we talked about breeding this specific animal for a long time. They don't need. You can just incubate their eggs in like deli cups with vermiculite. It's that easy. Um, and I convinced my neighbor. He's all about like investments and lo- long term money making. And I convinced him to invest twelve hundred dollars in a. a specific trio of specific animals <laughs> and we made a contract that he gets a hundred percent of the babies until he gets his money back and then he gets 20 percent of the babies from them even after he's paid off 
That is very interesting. So, okay, so I have to break this down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So I, I told you, I was like, well, you did what? When you yeah, first yeah. told me, I was like, what What contract? Yeah, yeah. should I be mad? I, yeah, I, I was actually impressed. impressed. I was like, yeah. you just got your next door neighbor to give you $1,200. That's amazing. But he was also, we've been, we were talking about it for a while. Because we, so, had, we had one and our friend had one. And we were like, oh yeah, let's try and find out if we have a male and a female. Yeah. So will he? Will the neighbor be completely hands off? Like he he doesn't do anything yep, with reptiles. He, he, he doesn't know anything. Said, he even he, said in the beginning, I don't want to learn about them. I don't care to help care for them, but I will invest in them as long as I am making good money off of them. So I think so, after the first breeding season, he is going to be very happy with the babies we produce, and and then that yeah, and, and then that that'll, that'll be him. you know then he'll hold back you know, some of the baby, the best looking babies he gets. And then that'll mm-hmm. kind of start his project. And then, but all off this initial investment that he didn't have to make. This is the main so, reason we went to that great <laughs> reptile expo was to learn about how to breed these. So have you sourced the trio already? It sounded like you, there was already two kind of yeah. in the mix. You need another one? Uh, no, we have all three of them. Oh, you have all three. Yeah. Okay. We've got the one male and the two females. So yeah, we've got a couple babies that were growing up for later. Yeah. So tell me about Maddox when you went to your neighbor. Would you go knock on their door? And <laughs> oh, say, like, so he wants me to mine cryptocurrency for him. It was like this, <laughs> like this Pac-Man game. Dude, I told you, man. This is <laughs> <laughs> it's like this Pac-Man game, and you can play it on computers and mobile games. And you get, you can like mine out cryptocurrency and invest it into a wallet of crypto of your choice. And I went over there to talk to him about setting that up. And he's going to pay me 20 bucks a day every day I do it. Or I can choose to get paid back in money to open a wallet and build up my own crypto. He's going to he's going to have him mine crypto and then pay him in crypto that he just mined for him. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So this way I can just build up all my own money over time. And I was like, well, instead of you paying me in cash or crypto, why don't you help me out a little bit? And then we can both make some good money. And he was like, sounds like a plan. Yeah, well, that's pretty impressive. I have to say that's pretty impressive. Dude, so, when I was thirteen, <laughs> <laughs> like, I was—I don't even know what I was doing. Yeah, yeah. But I not was not. I was not. Deals. I was not trying to get investors. It's like you yeah, said yeah. when we first came on the podcast. I've always got a side hustle going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's pretty impressive. So, so the plan will be: you, once he hits his twelve hundred, then you're going to just continue to give him twenty percent. And he's looked at the numbers. Mm-hmm. You said we can sell the offspring at this at this amount. Oh, yeah, we, we, we spent, yeah, because at first he didn't, he wasn't buying it. And then I pulled up Morph Market and I was like, well, this is what you buy, essentially. Yeah. So, like, this is what, and he's Just like, yeah, but if like those are all for vintage. sale, then that means they're not selling. And then you go to like the last pages and you see everything on all hold. the same different morphs are on hold. So Which he was like, okay. So you know, I'm hoping that we get good looking babies that he will invest back into like a more expensive line because any reptile with heads, there's always going to be. The ridiculously, insanely expensive ones. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope that business proposition works out well. It sounds Thank like you. you have a great idea. And, and right now, the animal is unknown, right? You haven't, you haven't said. Well, like we you haven't. haven't said, said, no, said we haven't. Anything. Or anything. Mm-hmm. No, we're we, 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 we're actually filming the video tomorrow for yeah. that. Okay. Well, I won't pry it out of you on this one, but uh, I'll, I'll have to watch on the channel to to see what it is. So why don't we talk a little bit about the YouTube channel? Because that is a sort of a secondary hobby on top of keeping reptiles. Yeah. And, yeah. And, you know, that was one thing with the podcast. It was from for myself as well. It's like a whole other piece. It's not really reptile related, although it is. But there's all these other aspects that you're learning, you know, editing, yeah. all these different things. So w- how did you guys get started on, on deciding to do a YouTube channel? Um. So me and him, we were already filming a bunch of stuff because people like on Instagram, there's a lot of good reptile stuff on Instagram. And we were already filming the majority of the stuff we do anyways mm-hmm. for Instagram posts and stuff like that. And we were like, why don't we just talk in the videos and put them on YouTube? And yeah, that, that, was, that was essentially all it was. It mm-hmm. was like we're spending so much time filming and photographing the animals and what we're doing with the animals anyway. Maybe someone will want to see it. Maybe somebody will think it's cool that it's a kid that's doing it and not just like another middle-aged dude with a bunch of spiders in his basement. (laughs) Um, And, uh, you know, so there was kind of a little something unique there. And then the fact that we were doing it together, um, I said, there's probably some people out there that would watch it and it it would think it was cool. And maybe we can help some people to, you know, inspire some people to learn about some things differently Mm -hmm. and look at some things differently. And I've Um, even got like friends at school that are like, 
I've watched your channel. I want a lizard. Help me out. What's going to be easy to take care of yet also like interactive. Mm -hmm. I've got people asking me how to take care of spiders, how to take care of geckos. But when you first started, it was kind of like, you have a channel about what? Like it wasn't Fortnite or, you know what I mean? Like it right, wasn't like a gaming friends, channel. Like so they're like, dude, YouTube that is channels. so weird. Like, like I remember they all thought of, it was so weird. A lot of my yeah. friends have a YouTube channel where they'll just post like gaming clips and they have 15 subs. And they were like, oh, well, I have a YouTube channel too. What's so different about yours than mine? And now. Yeah. And, it, and that's what was different. The content was like the totally content different. was totally different. And now they've gone from kind of making fun of me a little bit as a joke, like, all my best friends, we like make fun of each other. That's how we get along. But now they're like, oh my God, this is like, this is serious. And yeah. I've actually got friends asking about where they can listen to this podcast episode. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Well, it's funny. I mean, I'm in this, in a similar boat, like, you know, if people ask me what my podcast is, it's like, uh, it's a reptile podcast. And they're like, excuse me. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's what, like, what like, are you doing? Wait. Yeah. They don't like, they don't understand it, but, um, I also, um, in June, I believe I broke three vertebrae in my back Oh my and gosh. like, I wasn't able to lift anything over 10 pounds. I believe it was for like three months. So it all kind of just happened at, I mean, not that there's a good time to break your back, but, <laughs> um, you know, it all kind of happened at like a good time where we were talking about it and I was like, well, I can't do anything else. So like now is the time if I'm going to learn how to edit and how to, you know, cause I didn't know how to do any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. I'd never edited a video in my life other than, you know, like iMovie on my phone or something like that. Never used Photoshop. Didn't know what a thumbnail was. Didn't know what algorithm meant. And as far as like YouTube when, and we just kind of started randomly throwing clips together, tried oh, to make them digestible and throwing them up there mm -hmm. and learned as we went along. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, look, YouTube is a pretty massive learning curve, so it does take some time to, to get used to it. And yeah, it's the one weird thing with your generation, Maddox, is, and I work with kids that are your age as well, where YouTube has been like ever present for their entire life. Right. You know, I've always watched YouTube videos. Yeah. Which is just a weird experience for anyone who's, you know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, I'm 15 years older than you. And I remember YouTube was just like when I was in high school was just starting to pop up, but there really wasn't anything on it. And even mm -hmm. in my early university years, it was just starting to get good. And now like there are people that are born into this world where YouTube is just there. And so, and it's just like, like my little sister, that's all she does is watch like how to draw, I don't yeah. know, BB eight from star Wars. And she watches kinds of videos all the time. Now granted, or people she, playing with Barbies. Like yeah, I, there's some so, weird there's stuff weird out stuff there for kids, YouTube. man. Like sometimes yeah. I'll walk in and I'll be like, what, like, what is this? Like, the, I mean, like our channel is weird, but like, this is weird. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, like, what? Watching this channel. <laughs> yeah. She's watching this channel. It's like these two, I think they're Russian. And it, Oh yes. Oh, I forget what it's called, but these like these two little kids, the brother and sister and they're Russian and all they put like some kind of voice effect in editing and it makes all their words sound like Alvin and the chipmunks and they distort oh, yes. it. So you don't know what they're saying and it is just the most annoying, <laughs> but thing. she can't get enough of it, man. It's just, it blows my mind. Like the stuff that people like really are drawn to on a platform yeah. like this, that. This channel has like 15 million subscribers. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what are we possibly doing wrong? <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Oh, right. I ask myself that every day. <laughs> Dude, we're, ed we're, we're educating people. Like, and, yeah, yeah. you know, that's, that's the that's difference. That's what YouTube was made for, right? Wasn't it originally to be like a how-to? Actually, you know, that's a good question because like you're saying, he, it was always been here for him. So, right, but like, like when first I, YouTube I ever watched was like gaming videos, like Titanfall 2. Yeah, clips, but I think when it game. originally started, all I remember is like, if I wanted to, to, if like friends took a video of something, cell phones couldn't send it anymore. Exactly. So like they would just upload this ran this random video that they took at a party or whatever onto YouTube so their friends could watch it. And like, that yes. was really like all it was. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very strange. And so sometimes I'll find like my generation and people who are older than me, if I tell them I have a YouTube channel, they think they're kind of confused by it. But if I tell younger kids, they're just like, wow, that's like a legit job. They're like, how did you do that? So it's funny the <laughs> different, like, because that's what they see. And they see people who are really popular on YouTube and who are making money doing it. And it makes mm -hmm. more sense to the younger generation. It's, it's kind of strange. It is. It is. Uh, and I mean, I, it's the same thing. I mean, my, my neighbors, I, you know, people my age, like they know that we're doing it, but it's also kind of like, well, you know, I'm helping Maddox with his channel. That's kind of how it started. And then now it's kind of become more our channel. our channel, but originally it was his idea. It was um, originally my idea. So, um, 
they, you know, but they didn't care. <laughs> you know, like they didn't yeah. really like get right. it. People don't really care until you like actually have over a thousand subs. And it's not even, it's no, it's not even that it's it. Cause you can I mean, tell that's, somebody that's that for me specifically, like, People oh, migrate, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless you're monetized, they couldn't care less. Yeah. See, like people, though, like I think the like our generation, it's kind of like they don't even care because like you could like you could tell them like, oh, yeah, well, I have like 50,000 subs and they're like, and like that doesn't even mean anything to them yeah, because yeah. like they don't want they don't they watch don't the watch platform. YouTube. Right. But what, what's been really cool is we've had people come over to the house and check stuff out and you know, they've known that we did the channel and they've known that we were trying to educate people or whatever, but it, it didn't really, but wasn't, they didn't track it. It went on the mm -hmm. radar at all really. And mm -hmm. then they come over and they see it all in person. And then it's like, next thing I know, they're like posting stuff on Facebook. Like I've seen this in person. This is pretty cool. What these guys are doing. You should go check this mm -hmm. out. This happened a couple yeah. times. So, yeah, that's cool. You know, it took a long, they took a long road to get, you know, to where now they're interested, but we still accomplished the goal of getting somebody more interested in, you know, the animals and stuff throughout, you know. Well, and it seems like you guys have a mix of content. Like you have, you have lots of shorts on there, which is good. Like I'm so bad with do, posting shorts and whatnot, uh, but dude, then you also I have some. At shorts, it's, they're weird. I know, I know. I, I, I'm always so bad with them. Like, oh, I forget about them all the time. But, yeah. but you also have some longer form content as well. Like you guys have some mm -hmm. like conversational things. So how, how did you get into that? Um... I think we start our first stream was really just like we had never streamed on YouTube, but we just wanted to see. He used to stream on Twitch a lot. I would stream on Twitch kind of with him. He'd let me play like a couple of games of, I think, like a Black Ops 4. Yeah. <laughs> and we just kind of wanted to see how it was different streaming on YouTube than on Twitch. And we were like, hey, this is actually pretty fun. And if we get like guests that are interesting people to talk to or like new people come in the stream and then join the Discord, it's. It's, it's like, yeah, it's, it's fun. I think it's more fun than recording videos, but it's just it's just different. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I think that the longer form content initially when we decided we wanted to do this, we definitely went and watched like other people mm -hmm. and how they were doing it. And I think we kind of started out as a very. I don't want to say stereotypical pet tube channel. I know that term gets thrown around like it's a negative thing. And uh, I, 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 I look at any channel that talks about animals that are kept in captivity as a pet tuber channel. I don't really care what, but mm. when I, when I say that, I'm thinking, you know, it's like, Oh, look at our new this and we're going to unbox like, this and, and we're like going to feed only this. Videos they have is, yeah. And, and, like, and there's people that like, we've done some unboxing videos and we've done some videos just like check out our new Crested Gecko, as an example. And after we kind of did a few of those videos, we were like, okay, we've got quite a bit of animals now. People are starting to like watch our videos a lot more. They know who we are. Our name's out there. Now we start doing like care guides and top five lists and more of like, well, I think I don't really know how to describe it, but that's kind of like we wanted to do something channels do more stuff like that. We wanted to do something a little bit different. We wanted to try to come up with topics that were not the same that you see everywhere else. But in the right, beginning, we didn't we didn't like, know. Like people, we didn't know what we were doing. So we were just like, well, everyone like, else does it this way. So like yeah. that's what you're supposed to do. People yeah. typically do like top five overlooked beginner reptiles or like top five tarantulas. And then we did like top five reasons you shouldn't get reptiles. Or, or like or shouldn't get a tarantula. Or like or, the biggest downsides to keeping reptiles and people I I think that it's very clickbaity. I'm not going to lie. Because they're <laughs> like, wait, I know these guys. They have all this stuff. Why would they not want to have all this stuff? Because there's more downsides than upsides. Like but if you if you wanted to make a list, I mean, but but the one upside is that you, you love the animals, animals so much that yeah. you deal with all the other stuff was kind right. of the That's point. Like but the biggest pro. Um, I think that like as we've gotten through, you know, we, we did something about we're trying to get a little more experimental. Like yeah. the video that went up today was all about like different enrichment techniques mm -hmm. um, and how we try to provide mental stimulation. And it wasn't and really it's still like a very kind of vague topic, but there's, you could argue left and right up and down that you should be doing this. You shouldn't be doing this. It's still pretty new. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it's, it's been around for a really long time. Mm -hmm. um, I just think that in the average hobbyists are starting to pay more attention to it. Yeah. yeah Cause like, obviously if you go to a zoo, all the reptiles, birds, doesn't matter what they have, they're all going to have some sort of in toys or stuff like that. But I don't think like, I've never gone to the zoo and looked in like the King Cobra cage, seen something in there for enrichment and been like, Hey, 
that's pretty cool. We should try that. Mainly because I don't have any snakes. But, um, or like lizard cages. Like they have tegus, I think. Don't they have tegus at the Indiana Zoo? No, they don't have tegus. Oh, they don't? Oh, they have some kind of big lizard. I don't remember what it was. It was some kind of monitor. And they had, it's, it's like the beauty ball we have, but it was like this big. They oh, said, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, they like a feeder smart. puzzle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a feeder puzzle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I saw that and I was like, hey, that's kind of cool, but I never would have thought we should try that with our water monitor or a bearded dragon or something like that. But now we do. <laughs> you know, yeah. now we do stuff like that with them. So we wanted to show that to people. So um, we're definitely trying to get away from the just like meet my new pet or, you know, whatever, um, which is which is really weird, because if you put up something that says, hey, I have a ton of animals, come see them all like you're going to get more people wanting to watch than if you talk about something in rich, like enrichment, which is way more important than, yeah. you know, so it's yes. hard to walk that line, but I think that we're at a point now where it's just like, we're going to put up the stuff that we want to put up. And if people mm-hmm. don't want to watch it, then like, whatever, you know, it's mm-hmm. just, I, I'm going to try to put out the messages that we want to put out. With an enrichment video, like he said, it's important. And if you want to give your animals the best life possible, then it's something important that you should try but it's not going to get as many views in terms of people aren't going to want to watch it as much as like a tarantula rehouse mm-hmm. or, or a feeding video or like or... getting a new animal. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It was very hard to navigate. You know, when yeah. we first, when we first said, you know, let's make a YouTube channel, I don't think we really had a clue and it's just kind mm-hmm. of over time. We've tried to brainstorm and come up with ideas and we disagree on a lot of stuff. It's like, I'll come up with an idea and he's like, no one's going to watch that. And I'm like, I don't, you know, maybe not, but I think it would be cool. I think that was like the the music one. We like, we tested vibrations on tarantulas. We put a speaker next to the cages before we fed them. And I wanted to see like if the vibration from the speaker was going to affect their ability to track their food. Mm-hmm. And it did. They weren't, they, they, it took them a real, some of them could not eat until we turned the music off. Oh, wow. That's it, interesting. Which, which was really cool. And I was just like, I've never seen anybody do this before. And we use spiders that have particularly aggressive feeding responses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think if you can always tilt towards adding something new to the mix on YouTube, like yeah. you know, mm-hmm. adding education side, it's all, I think that all will eventually come as, as valuable. Like you said, it's hard to navigate at first because you want to do what the other channels are doing. That makes you, mm-hmm. makes them successful. We define success by lots of views and lots of subs, but it's like, yeah. are they actually adding lots of value? Right. And I, yeah. And I think that that's kind of where, kind of where we got to where it was in the beginning, it was like, well, this is what you're supposed to do. And now it's like, well, let's figure out what we can do that they're not doing, you know, it's, um, or put a spin on it or elaborate on it or, you know, something like that. So it takes a lot more effort (laughs) to put, to put those kind of videos together, but it's a lot more rewarding when it's done. Do you guys have any future plans for the channel? Like, you know, any ideas that you're working on or, or um, I thought of like a sub goal. I don't even think we have a, we, we never really had a sub goal, goal or anything goal like that. Just right more now. subs than yesterday. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I would like to get to like 10,000 cause 10,000, I feel like that's a, not anything like at all. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. For me, I never even, I never had any sort of a sub goal in mind at all. I was just like, this is a lot of fun. I'm enjoying spending time with my kid and uh, people seem to be enjoying it. So There's I'm going to keep doing projects it. projects we've been talking about. Like we want to do a paludarium project, which we just think would be really cool. We've wanted a paludarium. Mm-hmm. Except a that while. I want a paludarium with an axolotl in the bottom. <laughs> so I'm going to have to, of course so, he does. So I'm going to have to run a chiller. Yeah. To keep yeah. the water and, and that's a, that's a pricey endeavor. Um, if anybody in the aquarium hobby know has yeah, ever looked at chillers, they're they're expensive. And I just don't see that. Like, I love axolotls. They're absolutely adorable. They're super derpy. It's like my animal because <laughs> it's derpy. <laughs> but I just don't understand why he would spend five hundred dollars on a chiller for a fifteen dollar animal. Because if because there could be someone else out there that's thought about doing it and they've just said, man, the heat lamps, this, this, it's never going to work. And if you're not in the aquarium hobby, you might not even know that a chiller exists. So, like, if you can figure out a way to do something different, then you should do it and then show other people. Use a chiller for Catalina's. Oh my gosh, stop. <laughs> See, this is a live example of the disagreements that two people, two creators exactly, have working on exactly. the same channel. And I mean, and we do it, like, it's, it's like, you know, a lot of people will, they'll watch our stuff and they're like, well, how much of that is scripted? And I'm like, 
nothing. None of it. Like, Mm-mm. this is just how we act with each other all the time. I mean, we even just... if we'll, like, kind of script out stuff we're going to say in, like, the next video clip we film. And then <laughs> put I'll all just the completely ad-lib. turn around what he says and straight up insult him. <laughs> and then we'll just kind of pick it up from there. Yeah. And it's funny. People comment about, but, like, oh, my God, this kid. But I think that that is because of, you know, because of the way that we've been able to bond with each other through this whole experience. It's like we have that kind of relationship where we can joke around with each other because I like sometimes he'll say something to me and I'll laugh. I'll think it's like hilarious. And then I'll be like, dude, if I said that to my dad, like I would have been slapped. Like there is no (laughs) way that I would have gotten away with that. Advantages. (laughs) Well, that's what's just so cool about this whole thing. And that's why I was happy to have you guys on just to talk about that, the, the power of, of how the relationship that can get built around herpetoculture and, and around yeah. content creation too. Like that's a whole other section to it, like we had, had already said. And and it, it's one of those areas where p- parents may not realize that potential there. They might go, oh, they want to crest the gecko. Like it's kind of annoying and I don't know if they're going to care for it. But just imagine if you foster that and then even the parent maybe try to get involved in it and, and ask questions and, and help them care for it. And there's a whole relationship there that could be had that, you could miss out on if you didn't go the path that you guys have gone. Yeah. I mean, with your tarantula, when you got it, I, you know, I've never been scared of them, but I was always kind of like, why would people want to keep these? Like, I didn't really understand it. And then we had one and he, we did some research on him to make sure we were taking care of it. Right. Cause you know, when you put an animal in a cage and it gets out in 20 minutes, you know, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> yeah. So, but <laughs> as I'm doing, <laughs> but, like, but as, as we're I'm doing, doing the research, research, we're like, wait, these things are awesome. And, and then, then we were like, oh, blue ones. Oh, this is a red one. Oh, that one's ginormous. And but then- but, that, but that, you know, allowing him to like, I guess, in a way, fostering his interest in the, the one tarantula unlocked an interest that I didn't know I had because mm-hmm. I would have never went to research tarantulas mm-hmm. had he not bought one. Right. And so I guess, you know, you kind of asked that question earlier about, you know, could the kid get the parent into it? And I guess like I didn't really think about it at the time, but that's a perfect example of how, you know, allowing him to be like, oh, dude, whatever, if you want it, go for it. You got the money, like, cool. And then now just by allowing him to do something, I wasn't really interested in it unlocked a completely like new world for me yeah. that. I had no desire to be a part of <laughs> until he got it. Now, now got you got 50. 50 spiders. Yeah. Now I got 50 <laughs> spiders and I love yeah. every single one of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Well, I, this was a fantastic conversation. Like I said, I, I know that this will be very relatable to many people because people are going to be either in your situation or wish they were in your situation. I think this should motivate people to whether or not you're the child in, in that relationship or the parent or just a friend, you know, however it is, or a spouse, there's, this type of relationship is there uh, in in within herpetoculture, and it's pretty amazing. Is there anything that we didn't talk about today that you guys wanted to mention before we officially wrapped up? Uh, I mean, I think the one the one thing I would like to say as um, if you are a parent and a child, or even a whole family, and you are kind of interested in, in in fostering some a bond like this through herpetoculture, I would highly recommend that the first species you get is something that everybody agrees on and everybody is interested in Mm -hmm. Um, because the tarantula thing worked out the way it did because I already had a strong love for animals in general. Mm -hmm. But if you really want to find something that you guys can all care for together and bond over, you know, don't, don't tell your kid they can't have a bearded dragon because you really just want a leopard gecko or, you know, find some sort of a compromise when you guys start. And then as you learn and grow, you can, you can kind of expand from there to eventually maybe you'll have a bearded dragon and a leopard gecko or whatever, Mm. but definitely start with something that everybody has at least some interest in because that's going to make it easier for everybody to really work together and build that bond. Yes. I yeah, no, that's you. a that's a fantastic point to make and, and very important. Maddox, can you let everybody know where you guys can be found online, social media, YouTube and whatnot? Mm-hmm. So on YouTube, it's our channel is Exotic Idiotics uh, underscore all lowercase. S on the There's end. no underscore on YouTube. That's only on Instagram. Oh, well, then on Instagram, it's at Exotic Idiotics. Um, you can check out Herb Colt and Blackbox dot com for great cages herb colt's got all kinds of great Dude, invertebrate- don't, 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 no, 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 no. don't be blasting that stuff on here <laughs> go for it <laughs> okay whatever okay. go for it yeah, yeah, go for it yeah <laughs> so no herb colt, they've got great invertebrate cages and you can use code exotic fam 10 to get 10 percent off your order black box has better like 
more reptile cages. Same code. Ten percent off your order. Um, Instagram, YouTube, Exotic Idiotics. Join the Discord. I don't know what the service called. That's on you. It's called Exotic Idiotics. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, pretty, exo- it's pretty streamlined. Yeah, <laughs> I, try yeah. to, I try to make it as little confusion as possible. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you both for, for spending the hour with me today. And, and thank you for highlighting this really important part of the hobby that I think people don't necessarily think about all the time. And I think the more we promote stuff like this, the better it looks for herpetoculture. So thank you so much for, for a fun hour. Both of you guys have a great sense of humor as well. So it, it was fantastic <laughs> chatting with you. Well, no, thank you. Thank I had you a lot of fun. Us. Yeah. I had a lot of fun too. All right, that is the end of that episode. Jeff and Maddox, thank you so much for jumping on the podcast. I had a blast chatting with you guys. Like I said at the ex- in, in the uh, outro there, I found you both very funny and I can imagine how much fun you two have together. I think anybody would love to spend a day with you guys interacting with the hobby with you because you have a great relationship and I think you're really showing the power of herpetoculture and the power of, of how it can create very solid relationships with either your other family members or your friends and I think that is one of the most important parts of herpetoculture so thank you so much for sharing your story if you are a listener thank you for listening to the podcast what do you think do you engage in the hobby with another individual are you more of a solo hobbyist what do you think would you like to get somebody involved either one of your children or your spouse or a friend let me know in the comments on YouTube where you're sitting as far as the relationships go around herpetoculture. So just as a reminder, as I said through the intro, if you didn't catch that, this will probably be my last episode for the calendar year of 2021. I definitely won't be, I'm pretty sure I won't be posting an episode on the 26th of December. That's pretty close to Christmas. And I probably won't post one the 2nd of January, which is the the first Sunday of January. We'll see. I may or may not. If you are wanting to know when the next episode comes out, make sure you follow me on Instagram. That's when I kind of give updates. That's at animals at home ca but like i said i'll probably take a little bit of time here to enjoy the holidays and i hope you have a good holiday season as well if you are looking for more information on the podcast make sure you head to animals at home network.com you can also join us on patreon at patreon.com slash animals at home and finally thank you so much to custom reptile habitats.com for sponsoring this episode of the podcast you can find links in the youtube description or the show notes okay That is the end of the podcast for 2021. As always, thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed it, please share it with your friends and your family, and I will catch you guys next year.